So I was bored and I saw someone online doing a legitimately sincere ranking of the 16 personalities, so I figured I'd make fun of them by doing a video of my own. I'd like to thank my bedroom lamp, my giant pile of clothing, and my Pikachu plush toy for being the audience of this video. Let's begin. So I figured it was only fitting to rank the 16 personalities through the lens that I know best, how easily triggered they are. As you may know, I am somewhat of a trigger connoisseur myself, and so I do consider myself more than qualified to speak on this matter. Firstly, let's define the word trigger because I have no interest in joining the increasingly growing list of social commentary specialists who do not define their terms. To be triggered means that, to put it bluntly, your ability to think rationally and logically goes out the window in favour of your feelings, meaning that your experience at the moment of said trigger is not in line with what is true. And yes, there is such a thing as absolute truth. Funny that. Now that may not be politically correct, but it is fact. So it is at peak trigger that I like to swiftly swoop in and pour a bit of salt on that wound in order to watch it flare up and then laugh in their face. It's not mean, it's charity. I am but shining a light on all the cracks in the glass so that the whole pane doesn't shatter. Is that what a slab of glass is called? A pane? Yes. Yes, it is a pane which is fitting for this video. So I'll explain the tiers before we commence. I've called the S tier, Elmo could trigger them. This is for those who are so easy to trigger that pretty much anyone could do it. So your Karens, your bronies, pretty much anyone on the far side of any pendulum swing. To be honest, these people at some point were fun to trigger, but their lack of ability to engage in any form of intelligent rhetoric when in a triggered state has rendered me bored of triggering them and quite frankly, has had me reading the biblical book of Revelation with a hue of gleeful anticipation Patient. The A tier is trigger happy, aptly named because triggering people makes me happy. This tier is for types who are pretty easy to trigger and equally fun to watch get triggered. But the difference between them and the Elmo tier is that triggering these people involves some level of skill, which alongside with the fact that they go from zero to 100 when triggered makes them extremely satisfying to trigger. The B tier is rip me. These folks are easy to trigger, but the payoff isn't as good because either they're too shy or their fight flight response isn't quite quite working, which just ends up making me feel bad. Yes, I'm capable of feeling bad. Am I? These little pinches of remorse, however, are the leading reason for why I have not yet crossed the line into full-blown cynicism and mind-numbing nihilistic dread for the future of humanity, so. Cheers to these people. The C tier is trigonometry. Triggering the people in this tier is so challenging that it's like trigonometry, a thing that I have not done since high school, so I have no idea whether it is in fact hard, but I cannot be bothered to relearn it for the sake of this video. So we're just gonna pretend that it's hard, which shouldn't be hard for you Gen Z as if you're watching, am I right? Because the education system has failed you. As all education systems have been doing since the dawn of time. I'm not gonna elaborate on that because I went on that rant yesterday and I'm bored of it now. And the final tier is no one's home. In this tier, I'm going to put those whose lights aren't quite on, those who are out to lunch, those who have a couple of kangaroos loose out the back paddock, if you know what I mean. They're very rarely triggered, and if they are, they don't show it, so they might as well be a cardboard cutout to me. Who am I kidding? I would talk to a cardboard cutout. They might as well be Justin Bieber to me. Who am I kidding? I'd talk to him too. They might as well be a pool cue, a piece of lint, a ballad in the key of A minor, a slightly faded piece of parchment, an ooze tube, a worn out glove from the 14th century. These are actually just getting more and more interesting. So before I get into the type ranking, I suppose I better issue a trigger warning, but I won't because it's more fun not to. Oh look, we're starting with the easiest one. ESFJ will be the first to grace our Elmo tier, which is fitting because Elmo is an ESFJ. I don't know if that's true, but I'm hoping that will trigger some of you type Nazis in the audience. Actually, here's a fun game. Count how many times you get triggered in this video and let me know in the comments. Lamp, pile of clothes, and Pikachu, with whom I have had many conversations and are in fact sentient beings who can leave YouTube comments. I'm willing to bet that any human who can speak would be capable of triggering an ESFJ, though I have discovered a few phrases that never fail. If you wish to trigger an ESFJ, approach them and say any of the following phrases. Lying is fun. You're not a good friend. I just shoplifted. Glee is a bad show. And and unnecessary emotion. And watch unraveling unfold. Unraveling unfold. How can something be both raveled and folded? Wait, is raveled a word? What's the opposite of unravel? Tangle. Entangle. Maybe I should have said watch untangling unfold. Now we would have the same problem. Unless we 
Okay, INFP. Despite them being the meme monarch of the online Myers-Briggs community, INFPs are unfortunately not as satisfying to trigger as one might hope. I found INFPs trigger patterns largely unpredictable. There are emotions attached to random things. You have no idea where the landmines are. One minute, you're sitting down to tea, very pleasant, talking about where they bought their dog's turtleneck from, and the next minute, they're yelling in your face about climate change. Or something less related to turtlenecks to make my point stronger. What I'm saying is, what was I saying? Dogs. Trigger? Trigger. Ranking INFPs in a trigger. What am I doing? Oh yes, I am going to put them in the Elmo category because even though they're not triggered all the time, I can definitely see Elmo triggering them for one reason or another. Pikachu, you're an INFP, let me know why you're triggered by Elmo. Next is ENTJ, which involves very little thought, trigger happy. My personal favorite way of triggering an ENTJ is to get them talking about something that they clearly know a lot about and then keep telling them that they're wrong about it. Then as they try and correct your facts, just keep pulling an active listening face, but then when it's your turn to speak, make it clear that they haven't changed your mind or you haven't been listening by saying some highly unnuanced phrases like, oh, I still think I'm right though, or we can just agree to disagree, or just repeat the same argument you last said to them that they've just been trying to refute for the last five minutes. Their increasing frustration is like Christmas. Now to break up some of the meanness, sorry, meanness, we'll rank ISFJ next. Now I have to tip my proverbial hat to ISFJs because they tend to use a common strategy that I like to use when I'm pretending to be offended by someone. That is saying something quietly under my breath and looking at the floor as if disheartened and upset, which immediately provokes a sense of guilt in the offender and makes them want to take what they said back. And the ISFJs don't use this to manipulate people. No, this is their genuine, wholesome response. So I immediately feel bad when I trigger ISFJs. Unfortunately, I'm too afraid of vulnerability to apologize, which is why my mother and I no longer speak. <laughs> ESFPs are a classic easy trigger. Just get them to talk about something that they care about and then tell them that they're too emotional. They have this weird insecurity about their intellect, so if you imply that they're speaking from their emotions and not their brain, they'll get really mad, ironically providing you with another opportunity to tell them that they are too emotional. Let that cycle continue and you've got your fun. ENFJs are super funny to watch because they only know how they're feeling about something based on how the other people in the room are feeling. So if you do manage to trigger them, they won't necessarily know that they're triggered. And so it comes out in their trying to grill you while simultaneously trying to validate you demeanor. And if you ask them if they're okay, their people pleasing dictates that they have to answer that they're fine. Most ENFJs in this world are in a constant inward battle of trying to stand up for themselves as an individual in the group. And unfortunately for them, my motto is why not take advantage of that? Definitely trigger happy. INTP, ah uh, yes, one of the least emotional creatures of them all. Scholars have spent years trying to trigger them out. Yet these scholars have been foolish not to come to me, Professor Trigger, the true master of all things trigonometry. I have spent years, nay centuries, trying to find the perfect combination of intrigue and natural phenomena and intellectual laziness flavoured with a pinch of vague platitudinal superlatives to trigger the INTP. Tis a craft that I, and I alone, have mastered, much like wit and comedy. So they shall be the first case that I log in the study of trigonometry. I'm gonna put ISFP and rip me because they're a poor sensor that I shouldn't really make fun of. Nah, but for real, FI DOMs are not fun to trigger because their triggers are so personal that I end up just feeling like I've taken a walking stick from a blind person. And yes, I am implying that sensors are disabled. That was a joke, put your pitchforks away Way, peons of personality database. <sighs> Sorry, I got distracted and forgot I was doing this. Before we continue, I'd like to acknowledge the returning members of my audience, the Lamp and Pikachu, as well as the new members of our audience, slightly reduced pile of clothes that has diminished thanks to my mom doing my laundry and a random INTP that I found wandering on the streets. His name is Harold. Hi, Harold. Say hello, Harold. No? Harold will be mute. <sighs> what was I doing? Okay, now I want to change these categories. Oh no, wait, then I'll have to re-rank everyone. Let's just move on. Back into character. <sighs> ISTJ. Look, to be honest, ISTJ is another case of trigonometry. I find that ISTJs tend to give their super blunt and no BS answers willy-nilly. And so because of this, it means that they don't generally have a lot of pent up emotions that can explode in a trigger. Still, I am the professor of Triggerton University, and so I'm not about to let you down. A simple yet effective way of triggering an ISTJ is to be super vague about your instructions and expectations, as well as using a heck ton of therapy speak. They're allergic to therapy speak. Throwing out words like boundaries, holding space, gaslit, closure, 
empower or particularly triggering to an ISTJ, feel is a sure way to get their blood boiling. Might as well tackle the next STJ so that we're well and truly done with our TE doms and I don't have to think about them again. ESTJ is definitely going and trigger happy. Honestly, best tip I'm gonna give you today one, when an ESTJ is talking to you, just hold up your finger as if to pause and think deeply for a moment, then tell them to go on, and then do it again. Go on, hang on, again. Go on, hang on a second, I just need to think on that. Do continue, ad nauseum. Number two, when it's your turn to respond, draw out your sentences with long spaces in between each word. Maybe even go back and repeat the same sentence with different wording. Really take your time to get the exact wording right. Maybe go on a few tangents if you feel like it. Anything to sidetrack the topic or the goal at hand. You can even implement an additional element to this game, which is to place bets with your comrades as to how long it will take the ESTJ to interrupt you, or better yet, snap and vacate the premises. ESTP, incredibly easy and hilarious to trigger. My go-to companions at parties because we both enjoy getting equally triggered by the state of the world and society at large. They are also the only guaranteed type with whom I am free to make political politically incorrect jokes without ending up in prison. That's not to say I haven't ended up in prison for other reasons due to the ESTP's influence, but I digress. I will mention, however, that the only emotion an ESTP has is anger, so even a rookie could trigger them. INFJ, ah yes the perpetually ticking time bomb. I can only reasonably assume that INFJs must have some private outlet for their triggers because they refuse to explode in my presence. However, this does not make them immune to triggers. It just means that their outward response is far less interesting than one would hope. On one hand, I can commend INFJs for their self-control. On the other hand, if you're not gonna show me deranged anger, I have no interest in you. So you might as well be Justin Bieber to me. Sorry, sweetie. Oh, Harold, I forgot you were here. Harold coughed and alerted me to his presence. Prior to that, he had been blending in very much to the wall. Man, ENFPs are fun to trigger if only for the spontaneous, multi-chaptered dissertations that they are able to unleash on any given topic. Sometimes when I need something to read on the train, I'll just send a provocative question to all of my ENFP contacts at once, and I'm guaranteed to get at least one response from one of the ENFPs while the rest take about three to six months. My favorite thing with ENFPs is that you can even pivot mid-trigger to a different topic, and they'll completely forget about the previous trigger in favor of the new and shiny trigger. Being on a trigger rant with an ENFP is like a game of Pokemon Snap. Chaotically firing at one target and then forgetting about that one to chaotically fire at the next. And it is fantastic. Now a lot of people seem to think that the ISTP trigger is rare because not only are they some of the chillest people, but their version of being triggered is simply giving a metaphorical middle finger through nothing more than a facial expression. Now, I personally enjoy seeing rage seethe within anyone, no matter the context. But the ISTP trigger can be easy to miss. It is only my keen eye for the science that has allowed me to notice these quiet triggers. And because this is such an exclusive audience, I will be happy to share something with you that the world would be shocked to know. Come in a bit closer. ISTPs are not, in fact, indifferent to triggers. Rather, ISTPs are in a constant state of being triggered. It's constant. Why do you think they perpetually host a death glare on their face, hmm? Ha, <laughs> INTJ. Well, let me just put it this way. If this video was a birthday party, the INTJ would be the cake. That's definitely the wrong analogy. If the 16 personalities getting triggered were entities in space, the INTJ would be a black hole because they make all of the other triggers obsolete. That would actually be a fun video to make. What are some entities in space? I forgot about this video again. Where was I? Oh, great, INTJ. Well, obviously they're going in the Elmo tier, considering that they're triggered by literally everything. No, you know what? They're too much fun to be in that tier. Sometimes I try to imagine what it must be like inside the brain of an INTJ, and I just end up getting this image of this. This. Only each character on here is like an idea that the INTJ has, both ready to fight the world and each other. And last but most certainly not least, the best type of them all. I just realized Elmo was my sleep paralysis demon for a little while, so technically I belong in that category. Ah, for real, I do enjoy triggering the NTPs for the same reason I enjoy triggering all the people in the world ever. And let's be honest, this video was far too vague to be taken seriously anyway, and was really just a means of me killing what was supposed to be an hour, but in actuality ended up being... A month. Join me next time for a random topic that I have not yet decided, but will decide on the day that I choose to film myself as a means of procrastinating from a uni assignment. A gentle reminder to all of you who take type far too seriously, stop it, all of you. And remember, 
Not a second of this video meant anything.